a very special Meet the Biz. Um, this woman is an incredible recording artist. She's been on Saturday Night Live as a special musical guest. She uh, sang on the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, she was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Uh, and she's acted on classic TV shows like The Nanny. She is a singer, an actress, and even more, she is a healer through her voice and her being. Rosalind Kind. Hello, Rosy. Hello, David. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Yeah? You did this well. I didn't get to see the change. Oh, you didn't know? Oh, no, I'm still learning how to do the Zoom stuff, you know? But you have both of us on your screen, right? I have both of us, yes. And I'm just, I'm watching you. So that's good, because it feels more for me like a regular conversation. Than to oh, see good. So that's yeah, good. good. Well, I want you, I want you to feel at home. Well, you are at home. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was I was thinking, okay, what can I ask Grazi? There's so much I can ask ask her. And the first the first question that came into my mind, which I'm not even sure I've ever asked you this, but what is your definition of soul? Spirit. Spirit. It's the spirit within you. Your soul is what gives the body life. It is the part that God has implanted in us. It never gets old, it never ages. The body ages. Mm -hmm. The soul is what gives us life and the soul is actually what we're born with, with brings us the light from God that's in our hearts. It's the God self. Mm -hmm. It's the God self. Well, that describes your singing. I mean, the soul comes through you, through your voice and through your, your being. Oh, thank you. I, I, I try my best to, uh, to come from my heart always. Yeah. I know, you know, it's, it's very hard for me not to. I'll be quiet rather than say something that isn't from my heart. Well, I've always, I've always uh, seen it whenever I've seen you in person and sing live. I, mean, I remember the first time that I saw you sing in person was, um, I think it was 1992 at the Fairmont Hotel. Uh, mm -hmm. San Francisco. San Francisco. And every time you're just like, oh, you're sitting in the audience and mesmerized by this energy. I mean, you have this energy that's so amazing. Oh, well, that's nice to know. Like it, it's, uh, it's the power is up above working through me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just me. I think. It's, I think I, I, whenever I perform, I work, and before I go on stage, I, I meditate and I uh, do affirmations that God used me as a vessel to spread his message of love and light through my work, through my relating with people and through my voice. Yeah. Material that I, that I sing. Well, and it comes, to, I mean, knowing you, I, I, I feel it mm -hmm. uh, just in your everyday life, you do it. So it's, it's, it's a constant with you. And, and on stage, it's even magnified. I mean, at, at the Fairmont, at the, the Hollywood Bowl, uh, when you were there, and then uh, when I saw you at the Catalina Jazz Club, all of those times, you just, you seem to love what you're doing. And you, I mean, why do you love performing so much? I love connecting with people. I love looking in the eyes of people. You know, I, you can't always see a whole room. I mean, I, when I was in Europe and on tour and at the bowl with my, my sister, um, there are humongous amounts of people in yeah. Europe, like arenas of 20,000. But, I, you know, you wave and you hear them. But the ones that were in front whose faces I could see, I do look straight at them. Yeah. I love to see their eyes. I love to sing with them in my mind and in my heart. <sighs> so that they know, you know, like... Everybody says, how, do, how do, is it that I feel that you're singing just to me? I said, well, I hope that that is what's coming across. Because I am singing from my heart to each and every one of your hearts out there. And each and one of your, your eyes that goes to your soul. 
it tells me a lot. And I can, God has given me a gift of empathy yeah. that I can sense. And, uh, well, and what, what's so amazing too is the Hollywood Bowl, what is it? How many thousands of people are there and you reach everybody's heart? Aw, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, we have something in, well, we have a few things in common. And one thing that I know that we both have in common is the love of family. Yes. And yeah. narrowing, what, what? Is my sound coming out? Because I know I'm speaking soft. Are you okay? No, it's, it's beautiful. Okay. All right. It's Just beautiful. checking. Just checking. No, yeah, yeah. no, it's good to check. I, sometimes I wonder, you know. Yeah. But. Um, love of family is ultra important. Yes. Yeah. Love of family. And one of the things, uh, narrowing it down, is the love of our mothers. Oh, yes. And what I. Love I too. What, what? I love your mom, too. I call her Mama oh. Leia. Oh, uh, she loves that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mentioned this to you when you called on her birthday and, and sang happy birthday to her. She said, damn, I wish I had a tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mom. She's so feisty. My mother was feisty, too. Yeah, yeah. Why, how is it that your mom, Diana, how, how is it that she shaped you into such a loving person? I don't know. I don't know. My mom was never one to compliment us. She never would build us. She didn't, never believed in giving you a, quote, big head. Mm. She'd never be so high and mighty. But so she quietly, you know, gave us love and everything. But she never was a bragger. She never even bragged to her friends about us. She said, let my children, who and what they are, speak for themselves. Mm. And like, like I'd be sitting in a room when I was a little girl and my mother would be with her friends playing Mahjong or something. And one lady is bragging about her daughter, my this and my that. And I'm looking at my mother. She says, nothing. <laughs> my sister was already in show business doing well. And I, and nothing. <laughs> She right. just, well, you know, she's like from the, she was from the old school where you don't look to get compliments and you don't want curses put on you. Can I, what we call canina hurrits, you know, yeah. right? So she'd rather play it down. That was her upbringing, you know? Yeah. And she yeah. was never one to over patronize you, to over, you know, she, she would tell you when you were wrong more so than she would pay you a compliment. It was very hard to get a compliment out of my mom. I think my- you No, know, it did come, it was really true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, she, I, it seems like she gave you love through, uh, she gave you the, by doing that, she gave you strength. So she gave the love of strength to you. Probably. Yeah. In a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. But you loved her dearly, even though she was. Loved, yeah. No, she, she, you know, I, there was a time I, I, you know, there were some things where my mother didn't show and I, I was a hugger. I always was a hugger. Both me and my niece, my brother's daughter, are huggers in our family. We're the ones that hug. Everybody else is like a little like this, but you know the effect you can have on somebody when you're a hugger? Oh, yeah. You know, David. I know. I, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in the uh, hugger group. Which, that's right. And, it's, and, and that's why right now is so hard because- I, I know, I know. I know, I'm on the phone with my family and my niece today and everything. And it's like, mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you, Missy. You know, it's like, when will we see each other? When will I see you again? <laughs> I know, now I just have to go hug the screen. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Yeah, that is one thing. I read that on the internet too. It's like one thing that people are really wanting. The first thing that they can do when this is over is to hug someone. Hug someone, yes. Come to be able to touch touch someone and show them you care. <sighs> With a, a human human feeling, humanity. That's what all humanity should be. We should be like that with everybody. Yeah. You know, we should give everybody a chance and be real. And uh, and not have fear and not distrust that come from our our love light, you know. Yeah. Neil Diamond saying, you know, the love light, the heart light. Yeah, that's the heart light. light. That's God's light, and we all have to learn how to use that more than this part of the brain that creates fear and and anxiety. 
welcome, welcome differences, welcome and give people a chance. Everybody has value in this world. Everybody has a reason for being. Yeah. And you should not deny them their growth. You should help them. We should be helping each and every one because we all deserve that. Everybody. Yeah. You know? yeah. This is the time. This, this is, is it. I think right now we're, we're, we're here in our homes. I think we weren't hearing the message from God enough with the floods and the the tornadoes and the earthquakes. And I think right now Mother Earth is rebelling and this was the hardest hit to make you stop, actually stop yeah. and think about your life, think about the world, think about your, your place in it and why you're here and about people to, and about loving people. Really take stock of who you are. Mm. You know, it's a lot because there's a lot of people out there that can't stop working because they never want to look at themselves. And it's always work, work, rush, rush, success, this, that, that. And people don't matter as much. And that's so sad. We have to come back to family where family and friends are priority. Yeah. People should be your priority. Human beings should be your priority. And this is the time that's really making us do that. Yes. Centering yes. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Taking that breath. Right. I said that today in another interview. Oh, taking the breath? Yeah. I did, yeah. Uh -huh. Important. And you were talking about... You're a big believer in breath. What? You are, you are a big believer in taking a breath. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, every day. And, you know, you, you think, you know, oh, yeah, I know about breath. You know, meaning the breath of this moment. And then you're like, oh, here's a different breath I haven't experienced before. And you just have to go, okay, okay, how do I deal with this breath? How do I get through it to the next breath? And, but at the same time, experience this breath and then move forward. Exactly, exactly. And to move forward, we have to hopefully this time at home, taking stock of our lives, each and every one of us will become better for it. And when we're out in the world again, we'll be better with all our fellow humans and our animals and the planet to be kinder to each other and to help each other and to look with new eyes, look with more spiritual eyes. Mm. I, it's, it reminded me of what I saw on the internet the other day, I think it was Facebook, where all these animals were like looking in the windows. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. Just send I, it to, did you, can, do you have a, can you send it to me? I'll send it to you. It, it was fascinating because, uh, I mean, here's this guy sleeping in a bed and somebody had taken a picture and these two deer are looking in the window like, where the hell are you guys? Where's the human race? <laughs> where are you? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah. And you were, talking, you were talking about light and... Mm -hmm. Right now, you're in the middle of making a new album, which is yeah. very... Which taking my time doing because I want the songs to be right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm picking them as I go along. I had the first few picked, but now uh, as we're coming to uh, completing the ones we have, I've got to think about other ones I would like to do. So right now I have two released out digitally across the digital sites uh, that you can get. One is a cover of Laura Nero's big hit, uh, save the country uh, from the Vietnam War and when the co college kids were protesting. Um, very strong then, I think even more necessary now. Yeah. 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 I think it will do a lot of good now. People should listen to the message. I'm not in this right now. And for me, myself, I'm in it to help spread getting people together, giving love and light coming yeah. together. And, you know, because of your differences, because of your similarities, the one, the other thing we have in common is our blood. We have the same blood. We come from the same universe, the universal light, God, the universe, however you address him, her, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you see it, as long as it's all from love. Yeah. And, and to, to be able to know that we are kindred, we are kindred to each other. I don't care what you look like on the outside. We're all brothers and sisters. That's, that's one of the, tr the education lessons we are here to learn is unconditional love. Mm. Yeah. And to cherish the differences in, in the next human being, to yeah. learn about them and experience them 
and you become so much better for it. And allowing the love. I yeah. think some people are so afraid of, afraid of it that, oh, no, 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 no. And that's, I think, possibly where the hate comes from, rather than, okay, I'll, I'll allow your hug. And it might, what, you know, I felt that and I started tearing up a little because it's like, is it, a, you know, I, I was imagining how some people are afraid of that, but then when they get it, it's like, oh, this is what love is. It's nice. It's a nice feeling. I, when I was younger, and um, younger than I am now, but my niece and nephew were also much younger because they're both adults. Yeah. I, if they were with me in my company and they left without giving me a hug, I would cry. Oh. I mean, that hug, that meant so much. Yeah. It meant so much. You know? I and, I, and when I've been around the elderly, that touch means so much. When, with people with disabilities, that hug means so much. With babies, with your puppy, with your animals, to give them love, it means so much. And they know when they're loved. The animals know when they're loved. Yeah. You know, I, nature is beautiful. Nature, nature shouldn't be destroyed. It should be taken care of and beautified and fed. We you need know? to work in together with nature. We Definitely. need to live and breathe with nature. Keep our air clean, our water clean, the animals alive in their habit, in their habitats out there in wildlife. And, you know, I, to be free and experience living. I mean, and this is, they say now that LA hasn't had clean air like this ever. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure New York hasn't either because I'm living in New York because I'm originally from New York, born and raised in Brooklyn, lived in Manhattan. Yeah. The soot that would be on our windowsills in New York City. I lived on 58th Street between 8th and 9th when I was 14. Yeah. The soot. You couldn't open your windows. The soot from the driving, from all of that, it's just, it's amazing yeah. how dirty that is. So imagine the air. Imagine the air. And whenever you would drive past a, a factory of some kind, or whatever, when you would be coming from an airport or something in New Jersey, you would pass. I mean, I think I did a joke in my, in my show that I did when I was 18 years old at the Persian Room of the Plaza Hotel. I mean, yeah. something about a sweet smell that just blew over from Secaucus, New Jersey. Oh. <laughs> it was from, from industry. It was like, oh my God, it smells awful. And, you know, <laughs> and when I was on tour years ago, we were in a town in Maine that yeah. had a paper factory. I cannot tell you the stench. A what the, factory? A paper where you make paper. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it was, I couldn't tell, what is the stench in this town? It's better to be above a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> it smells delicious. <laughs> well, then you have to worry about the back of it with, with the garbage if it's picked up on time. Oh, right. But you know, to really clean things up for the yeah. betterment of all of humankind, animal kind, every living thing, the oceans for the fish and those living in the water. Those under, I mean... The days, yeah. oh, you know, it was so great. Now people are afraid to go in the water. You can't go in the water. The streams used to be beautiful and clear. What is it? A couple of years ago, a friend of mine went to the beach. Uh, I think it was Santa Monica Beach. And he was swimming in the water. He got out of the water and this guy came up to him and he said, I want you to do me a favor. Could you call this number in two weeks? And he said, why? He says, it's, we're doing a survey. If you please, you know, I understand you might forget her. Anyway, my friend called him and I said, he said to him, um, he said, I I'm calling back about, you know, the request about being on the beach. He said, and the guy responded, he said, uh, so are you sick now? And he went, yeah. He said, yeah, we just wanted to check because the water was so polluted and is so polluted, even on Santa Monica Beach, that they were testing, so. They have to. I love that group that's out there now that's going in and collecting the plastic out of the ocean. Yes. And they're making bracelets out of it. Oh, I didn't know they made bracelets they're, they're, they're out of it. Selling, taking the plastic and making bracelets and selling them to raise funds to keep cleaning the ocean up. 
Wow. You know, we have to, we have to worry about that because God created the earth. He created every living thing in it, the earth, the grass, the plants, the animals, the fish. He gave us dominion over them to care for them to take care of our earth so that we have generations and generations of ongoing life, good mm. life, yeah. healthy life. Healthy. And man has taken it for granted and taken so much from the earth. It's no wonder she's hitting back. I hope people stop and think about that. There are ways, you know, uh, there are ways to take care of it that we economically can benefit also. Yeah. You have clean everything and people working. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, one one thing that you are one of the many things that you give uh, is your gift of song and your gift of writing. And your newest song is "The Light of Love." Yes. Uh, what to the students out there, to everybody who is out there who wants to write a song. How would you say, what's the first thing to do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There are people that have been writing for years. This is the, the only song I've ever written, to uh -huh. tell you the truth, because it was about my finding my purpose in life and my first experience with a lot of people in a spiritual vortex in Sedona, Arizona, bringing up the sunrise during the harmonic convergence which is when all the planets were in alignment on August 16th, 1987. I had heard about it while I was on my own path. And I said, I had to be there. 144,000 people around the world were gathering at vortexes, spiritual vortexes around the earth to bring in the sunrise that day because the planets coming into alignment does not happen often. And when it does, there's an awakening. Almost yeah. like, you know, I, I question as to whether that was the beginning of the dawning of the age of the actual dawning of the age of Aquarius. Okay. It wakes you up. You start looking at things differently. You see things differently. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of like when uh, they, you know, how many, how long, for, how many centuries they thought the earth was flat, right? Mm -hmm. But the ship never went over and fell off, right? Right. So they didn't know really about gravity, but when they discovered the earth was round, oh my God. Well, you know, and they, you start looking things and, and the searching and, and your understanding grows and gets bigger and hopefully enlightened, hopefully enlightened. And what I heard that day with the chanting around the, uh, the mountain, Bell Rock in Sedona, different groups of people with different chants, but all to the earth's vibration, um, but all in their own chant the different chantings of different tribes, groups, whatever. It was the most fascinating and fulfilling enlightenment I had ever felt. Was and that I, something, was that the time you think something inside of you shifted to be more spiritual? Uh, no, I was already on my spiritual path earlier uh, in the early 80s, like 1984. Right. I was doing a lot of reading on the road, uh, trying to make sense of my life because it was, up, down, and side to side. Sometimes things were so fabulous, and then sometimes I would feel like something happened, like what is the message? Should I not be doing what I'm doing or whatever? You know, that's what you learn about really listening to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But you ask your higher self. I didn't know that's who I was asking at the time when right. I was searching, but I was. I was asking God and, and my higher self. And I did a lot of reading and came to the realization that for me, there's more to life than this one lifetime. And that led me to a past life regression, which mm. brought me to a life. I didn't see the birth canal. I didn't see any other life. It just took me to one lifetime where I was a man with a turban and pantalones and sandals living in a stone hut. And at this moment in time that I arrived, I was in a duel with another man over another woman's, over a woman's love. And unfortunately, she was standing too close to the action mm -hmm. and she was the one who accidentally got killed. So what came out of this was that from all of my lifetimes, I have been searching for that love that I lost in that lifetime. But with my word associations for that, for that experience mm -hmm. came universal love, 
harmony, understanding, a coming of together, a healing. And that was the day I realized why I'm here. And it was confirmed by all the readings I had from that point on, yeah. why I was here. And, um, and I just, that's, that set my foot on the path. It was not, you know, it, was, it still took years to come to where I am today. Because every day is a learning experience. Every day you learn something new. Mm -hmm. Hopefully for the better for yourself and for who you affect out there. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and so that was the beginning of my setting foot on this definite path of wanting to heal. And I've had readings since then that told me, oh my God, we are here. You heal with your voice. You have, you've healed so many, but you have so many to heal. And you know, when I was 18 years old, I was in a, working in a nightclub in San Francisco, and uh, there was a couple sitting there holding hands, and I, I was singing um, When I Fall in Love. I was 18 wow. years old. And at the end of the show, they came over to me and thanked me because my singing that song made him, caused him to propose. Ah. Uh. And he hadn't thought about it. He, he... I, I, I was so taken aback that I couldn't totally understand, but I was so thrilled and fulfilled that something within me. Yes. Feeding, the arrow goes, yeah. <laughs> helped them come together. Uh, God, and, that's I still, and I still went on not understanding that till my later years from why, for why I'm here and that Several about uh, in 2012, I was also, I'm just picking on certain, certain things that have happened. There are other things that have happened. When an elderly man, after I did a concert at Brooklyn College Performing Arts Center there, he came over to me when I was signing CDs and he said, can I give you a hug? And I said, of course. And he gave me this big hug, a bear hug. And he said, oh, who needs doctors when we have you? Ain't that the truth? Now, Tell me that that doesn't fill your heart. Yeah. You know? Well, you know what's so interesting? You're describing this. It reminds me of what my friend Corey Allen and my, my teacher would tell me. It's about this movement. Mm -hmm. It's the giving, but as it comes back to you in a different way. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, and I've talked with people who were not ready to hear those things about that type of life or whatever. And, you know, at this time, at this particular time, songs like Save the Country and Light of Love, I think, are so ready for this period of time. And everybody needs it. We have to lift everybody's spirits. We have to raise their hearts. We have to raise the vibration of the earth for it to be a better world. Yeah. A better participant with our other planets out there. Exactly. And you're doing that. You're I doing that. So. I hope so. And you bring you bring so much joy to so many from your voice and your heart. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Zimmy. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too.
It's like a mirror into your heart And it's you and me Giving light for all to see I feel this moment Touch a place inside of me I can understand Loving you is loving who I am You're the light of love Come shine your light Through the darkest night Deep inside of you Waiting there to For that someone you really are Well, if you just let go Have you looked inside You just might be surprised If you free yourself, you know Courage finds you and you're not afraid You're the light of love Come shine your light Through the darkest night Deep inside of you Waiting there to guide you through You're the light Show!